You take Josh, 20 million on TikTok, 30 million overall. He has more than 99.9% .9 of the top recording artists in the world, actors, actresses, and way more than most athletes, give or take five people on the planet, okay? Hey, welcome back to Max Out, everybody. So, what can you learn from an 18-year-old? You're gonna find out today. I have uh, a really remarkable young man to share with you guys today. Some of you for sure have heard of him, and if you have children under 20 years old, every single one of your children know who he is. And let me tell you why. First off, this guy is an entrepreneur um, at a very young age and a very successful one, but we're talking about someone with 30 million plus followers on all social media platforms, 20 plus million on TikTok, um, has founded multiple companies, has a podcast on Barstool Sports with Dave Portnoy. Um, and this has done a ton of other very remarkable things. So Josh Richards, welcome to Max Out with the entire family here welcoming you to our community. Hey, thank you very much, man. I'm, I'm happy to be on. I'm so impressed, guys. Let me just fill you in a little bit of, because it, you're the youngest person I've ever had on the show. And oh, okay. I, I think you're going to, I think you're going to teach people an awful lot of things. But guys, just so you know, if you, if you guys are familiar with Sway House, which I wasn't until about six months ago, I started <laughs> one, of, one of Josh's friends, Bryce Hall. And I became familiar with Sway House, which has become this movement. But just give you a little bit of background here. Um, Josh had his first business when he was 13. He comes from yeah. a little small town outside of Toronto. I mean, this guy's gone on to have found, uh, he's a, a founder of Talent X. He's got a business he's owned part with Snoop Dogg now. He's got an energy drink. Um, he signed his uh, recording on us. He's got his podcast. He's, he's got an investment in Ellen DeGeneres' deal on Hyde. He's the creative director of that. You're talking about a ton of different stuff, invested in multiple, multiple different businesses. Uh, Forbes named him one of the top five most influential people on social media. Uh, one of the most successful financially on social media. You're talking about a very remarkable young man. So first thing, man, I have to ask you, I want to know all you guys. Is it kind of a mind deal for you to go from this little town like outside of Toronto to having you're more famous than most musical artists and actors? I mean, is that is that messed with your mind at all? Um, it definitely was like a shock because I remember starting my, I guess, social media career in my hometown and building it up to like 20,000 followers and I'd never seen one fan. And then it got to a hundred thousand followers, still hadn't seen one fan. No one had ever come up to me and asked for a photo. And I went to an event for the first time. And as soon as I walked in the door, these six girls came up to me and were like, yo, can we get a photo? And like, that was the most blind, mind blowing thing to me that people just wanted to take a photo with me. And like, as it's gone on, it's just gone crazier and crazier. And now it's gone all the way to the point where paparazzi are just filming me eat for two hours. And it's like, it, it, yeah, it's definitely mind blowing. Yeah. I went to dinner with Bryce. It was the first time my, for a long time at dinner, no one gave a crap who the heck I was. And, <laughs> I mean, literally nobody. And I'm talking about people in my demo too. We walk outside and it's paparazzi everywhere. I'm thinking, gosh, this young man at such a young age to be dealing with all of this attention is it's got to be unbelievable. So let's start out. I want to I want to get into a little bit about you. But I read recently because you're unique, brother. All the guys in Sway House. And by the way, for my eyes, you don't know what Sway House is. I'm going to take you all back. Picture the real world, except on social media. All of you that are in your 30s or 40s, you ever watch the real world on MTV? It's almost like a reality show of these young guys' lives. You're unique because you got to be the young 18-year-old dude partying and all that stuff. I get all that. Yet there's yeah. the really, and so is Bryce, by the way really savvy, sharp businessman who's getting some of the best mentorship in the world. But recently, a while ago, you stepped away. And like, why did you do that? You kind of got away from it for a little bit. What was the reason for that? Uh, the party? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think what ended up happening is we wanted to show everyone like our true authentic selves at the very beginning because no one was doing that in social media. Everyone was putting up a character and I was actually signed to a manager for two years that didn't let me post any of the content I wanted. He would monitor every single video, every single story, every single tweet that went out on my account. So when I finally was able to be authentic, we went all out. We were like, we were showing them every single thing we do. If that's partying, smoking, drinking, whatever it is. And then when we got that audience, we got those people that realized how authentic we were. We were like, how, how else can we show our true authentic selves? Because if we just show one side of it, if we just show the parting, then we're not being authentic. Mm -hmm. So we're going against what we're trying to do, right? We got to show them everything. And that's when the business came into play. And with that, as I started like growing my portfolio out in the entrepreneurial world, um, there were just, there are certain deals and certain, I guess, partnerships that were 
way more important than going to the next party or going out drinking that night. So it was just kind of like looking at what was more important for, for me personally. And it was the business stuff. So really? I've just been kind of like stepping back, letting myself focus on the entrepreneurial side and grow that out. You're really impressive. And you're, you're obviously one of the top content creators in the world. So almost everyone who listens to my stuff wants to create content that people right. want to see. You obviously do it in your demo, but is there any advice you would give just in general to people who are creating content that they want people to see? So it grows their brand, it grows their, their company, it could grow their income. What, which overall content advice would you give? Yeah, I mean, one huge thing, and everyone says this, but no one seems to follow it, is like consistency is key. Like I've said that so many times to people and they'll be like, yeah, and then they go and they post, you know, twice a day for two weeks and then it doesn't work out and they're like oh, i'm quitting can that's not the trick that's not the trick like mm. i took two years where i was posting five videos a day on on tiktok it was musically at the time but two years five videos a day plus live streaming for four hours every single night from 10 p.m until 2 a.m straight four hours because i knew the only way i was going to be able to get ahead of the millions and millions of people that are doing social media was to just outwork them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I, I went, I went live all the time. I posted all the time. And then also it's, you got to make stuff that's passionate. Like you got to care about what you're creating. You can't just go and copy someone. Like I can't just go look at Bryce's content and be like, all right, I'm going to post the exact same thing on YouTube, the exact same style or else you're never going to grow. People are just going to look at you as the copycat kid. Yeah. And you need to build out your own identity. It's super important. Um, but yeah, those like building out your own identity and staying true to yourself and then consistency are like the two most important things. So beautiful. I want to go down that road because I did that too. I, well, I didn't do to the extent you did, which is why I don't have 30 million. I have 10 million. Uh, <laughs> and you, you know, guys, one thing about it too, you look at these young guys in Sway House. If you don't know what it is, Google it, ask your kids. You'll know in about one minute. But one of the things I said to Bryce is I don't think people understand the amount of work. It looks like a party. It looks like you're having a blast. It is yeah. work to create content. But the thing you said in the content that I think most people don't appreciate is you really, that identity thing, you're more revealing who you are. You're showing parts of your life. It's like, uh, I think some people think on social media, because it's what I do a lot. I was like, here's a tip. Here's a key. I'm an influencer you know, that somehow if you're not bringing value all the time, but I think it's just like documenting your life. I mean, 100%. with all due respect to you, you know, I don't think an 18 year old's life who's carrying on in LA is any more or less interesting than a 40 year old mother who's trying to get her kids off to school and get to work every day. Right? No, exactly. And there, there's just a whole different side of entertainment that comes with that. Right? Like, I have a different life, so I can show the entertaining things in mind. But like you said, a mother is going to have a total like, different side of it like three kids let's say they had three kids like my mom has three kids if she would have set up a video camera and filmed me and my siblings growing up i'm sure she would have had a ton of followers because we were crazy but also just like there's so much entertainment in people's daily lives that they don't even realize that's exactly what i want to brother if we do nothing on the show it's those because <laughs> i i'm so glad you said it because one i believe consistently of posting you know the amount you did is more of an idea but i'm bro it's every day i put something every out day. But people yep. value themselves. They think, I'm not interested. Who the heck wants to know about me? What you're not getting is Josh and Bryce and these other guys are the ultimate example of what we're average, ordinary, everyday teenagers. Yeah. Most, right? most normal kids. Just like I was playing sports. I was going to school dances. I was like the, just everyday kid, small town. No one knew me at all. Didn't come from a rich family. Like nothing like that. And I just picked up my, like, I think it was probably an iPhone five or four at the time okay. and just started creating videos in my room. Didn't need lighting. Didn't need like, it's just a phone and yourself and you can become whatever you want to be really. Yeah. And are you better at it now? Like, are you better on, or did you suck on camera in the beginning? Like give people some insight or are you already pretty good at this from get? Um, I was a pretty outgoing kid. Just luckily, like I was, you know, a class clown. I would always like stand up in class, make comments. So it was kind of just, I found a different way to be that class clown. It was just on social media. Right. But I definitely was not even close to as good as I like at the start to now. It, it like every single day when I was going live, I was getting better and better. I was finding different strategies to like entertain my followers because at the start people would be like, 
this live is boring. I don't want to watch it anymore. Yes. So I, I had to find new ways to spice it up all the time. I was playing different games. I was like engaging them with liking the video. If they would double tap it, I would play like if every 10 K likes, I would go and react to my fans videos or I would guess them on the live stream. It was, it was just thinking creative ways to keep it entertained. Yeah, I want everyone to get this. So you got to start to document your life. And what you think isn't interesting isn't for people the first time. But if I see you with your kids three times, four times, five times, I post my little Pomeranians all the time, my dogs, right? Everybody's got dogs, yeah. but I post them consistently. And people start like, I wonder what these, my dogs don't do anything cuter than your dogs, but I post them consistently. And you, they become something of an addiction when people start watching you. All of a sudden you've got yeah. more followers. Guys, just picture this way. You take Josh, 20 million on TikTok, 30 million overall. Okay. He has more than 99.9% .9 of the top recording artists in the world, actors, actresses, and way more than most athletes, give or take five people on the planet. Okay. And, and in my case, I've got, you know, several million people as well. And my first post got eight likes and I just kept posting regularly until people caught on. Let me ask you a question about young people. So if I'm an entrepreneur, I'm either a young entrepreneur or I'm a business that I want to market to them more. I want to recruit young business people. I want to sell to young people. What do young people want? Educate us in my audience. And by the way, there's tons of 18 and 20 year olds listening to this right now, two and 16 year olds. Yeah. But what do young people want on social? And what do young people want in terms of their ambitions in their career? What's important to 16 to 30 year olds right now? I mean, for me, I always looked at like the workspace and I was like, I want to do something more than just the normal. Right. Like, and I think that's for a lot of Gen Z kids now is because there's so much opportunity out there. No one just wants to be the regular guy that goes to college has like a works a nine to five office space fam, like the same old, same old, that tradition that everyone's done since like college has been a thing. Right. Um, so I think that, for me personally, it was like, how can I make sure I just find something more exciting or find something? And it was like creating content, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's really just anything that is different. Now people want to be different. Mm -hmm. Do you think that young people like from a business standpoint, here's what I'm fine. I interviewed uh, Damon John recently from Shark Tank. Right. And he had this really, he's got this sock company that's blown up where they, you know, they buy a sock and give some away to the homeless I, do you feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this generation wants to also be involved in businesses that have a purpose and a cause. Maybe It, it needs to be more than just the business, right? Like Dog for Dog, the company that you brought up with Snoop Dogg. Yeah. It's not just like a better dog food company or healthier kibble. It's every single time you go and buy a bag, a bag gets donated to a shelter. Like the euthanization in, in the United States is ridiculous. I'm pretty sure the last time I looked it up, it was like 700,000 dogs are killed a year in shelters. And it's like, for someone like me who has a Husky and then also my family had a dog when I was growing up, like that, that hurts me. Right. So then what I do is like, there's something more, right. I'm passionate about it. I love it. I can give back, but then also I'm, creating a business i'm i'm using my that entrepreneurial mind i have to help you know yeah what do you think of uh i think that's big guys i think that's big and you're hearing it from really arguably top one to five guys on the planet who deals in this demo but what about um overall like i just watched something on uh netflix last night the social dilemma on netflix it's a documentary i don't think i've seen it yet it's pretty interesting man about really you fit it perfectly about how the algorithm works and people get feeding on top of one another. But what about overall social media addiction? Have you gone through any of that? Like, I mean, cause you're huge. So do you think it's an, uh, do you think it crosses over if someone have children or even for themselves right now, have you seen it cross over to be like an unhealthy thing? Or do you think all of it's all good? It's all a net positive. I mean, I think that like, I think my brother spends too much time on social media, for example. Right. And like, as a kid, when I grew up, my parents limited my screen time. It was like, you came home from school, you got to watch one TV show, and then you were outside. Like, my parents kicked me out of the house. They were like, go go have fun, play outside, be a kid, right? And I think that's super important for especially this generation because how like how easy it is to always just be on their phone. They can always just pull it out of their pocket and check it. So it's a lot harder for parents also to monitor it nowadays. Yeah, It's, it's just got to be something that you look at. Pardon me? How much are you on? 
not that, like honestly i only go on my phone for posting doing podcasts like when i'm tweeting and then i get off because i spend so much time on it doing work it's like it's become something that i don't even like doing for my spare time anymore besides maybe watching netflix or playing video games with my friends but there's always like some feeling of being around people when i'm on social media so it kind of adds to the friend value as well yeah i want to remind everybody that i'm talking to an 18 year old right now so i just want you to listen to the amount of poise uh articulation intellect experience that this young man has and by the way when you go to tiktok and look at his content you're gonna go that's not the same guy because, <laughs> because he's revealed but when we listen to your podcast i do see that guy so right. you know all of you because i'll be honest with you tiktok started i blew it i'm like i don't get it man i'm not a dancer like i'm um, right. you know and and now i'm seeing more and more entrepreneurs and business people finally get viral on that platform. I'm curious as someone who's on the leading edge on the planet in social media. So you've got Instagram, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got YouTube, you've got TikTok, you've got Parler, you've got all these things. Yeah. Give us a glimpse as to what you see over the next five years. Like what are your insights about where social is going? Well, the, what we saw with TikTok was like quick form content, which we hadn't seen since Vine, like in that video format, like everyone went from Vine and then YouTube blew up with the longer form, like 15 minute videos, 20 minute vlogs. It almost felt like you were watching TV, but about your favorite person every single time. Right. And then as David came in, David Dobrik and inter introduced these like four minute vlogs, people started getting more and more used to this quick action, like always climax in the vlogs just best content you can get for four minutes and 20 seconds and then when tiktok came out you get 15 second videos or even shorter so what i think is going to happen is that there's going to be these short video platforms for probably the next three years and then it's going to boom again in the like five to ten minute videos Really? Yeah, I think that kids are going to love the short, like their short attention span. That's how Gen Z is right now. Like they just want to watch a video and then go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. Mm -hmm. I think that TikTok and play videos like that are going to move to more like 60 to like three minute videos. You do. At least I think there's going to be room for that soon. Very good, man. Because so you guys know that I said this earlier, but he's a founder in TalentX. He's like a TikTok management company. He's one of the things that Josh is involved with. So for me, I want to ask you, I want to stay on social because everyone listening to this is on social. So let's just stay on that topic for a minute. So I'm fascinated to hear that you think it's going to go the other way, which sort of favors me a little bit because I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying anything or doing anything in 15 seconds. But I'm also become a pretty big believer of not relying on one platform. Um, because you got it. You got to spread across platforms. OK, elaborate on that. What do you mean? Like you can't hold yourself to one social media platform at all that's like the worst decision i think any content creator can make and that's what when i first started social media and i was looking at what i wanted to do i was like 13 years old and i wanted to be a youtuber i remember i was like i, I want to go make vlogs but i also saw how hard it was to grow an audience on youtube when you just start on youtube you need something else to push it so i was like all right how can i push my YouTube when I don't have any social medias to push it. Like, where am I going to start? Then I saw Musical.ly and I was like, look, this app is this anomaly where you can grow quite quickly on compared to all these other social media platforms. Let me start on Musical.ly just so that I can push my YouTube, which is actually what I wanted to do the whole time. So it was like, I was never just focusing on one platform. Yeah. Ever. I was always branching out. And then when I grew my Musical.ly, I was like, all right, I need an Instagram because what happens if, what happens if that disappears one day? What happens if Musical.ly or TikTok, we saw TikTok almost got banned. Right. Imagine you were just like, you were just a TikToker. What would happen to you? Yeah, I think of, so Amanda Cerny is a friend of mine. She's been on my show. She was huge on Vine. And then like one day it was gone. Yep. And so I want everyone to hear this too. It's like, and you may stick better on one platform than the other. Like try YouTube, try making some content there. Try putting up stuff, right? Yeah. And I wasn't even good at YouTube at the start. Like I remember being so like, nervous or almost like unsure of what to say when I was staring at the YouTube camera and filming because it was so different than a live stream like it was a completely different thing so don't like go on YouTube anyone that's listening right now and then be like oh this is too awkward I'm too awkward it probably took me three and a half months to finally get comfortable behind the YouTube camera and I had already done social media at that point for three years hmm. 
So this is very interesting to me, you guys. Like, you would think that it's different in his age to grow your brand and your business, and it's not. It's the same principles. It's just he's better at it than everybody else. And, <laughs> and it's just it's just a, it's a fact. So I really appreciate you saying that. Now, let me ask you. I, I'm loving this, bro. I'm pulling everything out of you. I can't. Well, we yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, entrepreneurship. But inside that, you're conscious of – see, I think people should – if they're not good on camera, like write a blog. Have something relevant. Make, create an email yeah. list. Something. Don't you agree? Like find some way to expand your reach. People do business with people they know nowadays. People used to yeah, say – it's, it's go ahead, such go ahead. a like – since I've been in LA, I found so many times I will get brand deals or I will get um, a business deal just because I went to a dinner with someone. Like I went to a dinner with that person. We become like friends or we're on a good level. And then they're like, oh, wait, that Josh kid, I remember him. He would be perfect for this. Let me call him up. And boom, there's a $50,000 brand deal. Or, oh, look, I'm on a jet to Dominican Republic to meet Vin Diesel, right? Like those things have happened to me just because – of networking and knowing the right people. So like when people say social media is important or like you're saying, even an email list, a list, a blog, whatever, it is so important to do that networking to keep moving up and up in that entrepreneurial world. Yeah, because you're one, this is the truth. You're one relationship, one contact, one person seeing your video, one person reading your blog, one person away from completely changing your life. I mean, 100%. Even you and I are here because I had dinner with Bryce. Michael's there. He goes, yep. we got to Josh, and now we're doing something together, right? Which will expand you into a couple million new people in my market. I'm going to meet a couple million people in your market, and we're networking. If you go, well, I only got 80 followers. I've got 300 followers. You're one away. You're yep. one away. It's, it's, it's crazy how quick it happens. Like I, I remember like yesterday having my first video on Musical.ly hit 1,000 likes like my first ever video. And then it seems like just two days after that, I was signed to my first manager. And then a week after that, it seemed like I was on a tour. Like it happened so quick. And it's really just because of like the people you need to know. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And so everyone get out there, talk to more people, do it your way. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your podcast, BFFs with Portnoy. What are you doing there? What is that all about? Um, So I've been looking at my social media content and I've found that personally, I knew where I wanted my identity to go, but I wasn't taking the right steps yet. I had done some of the stuff branching out into YouTube was a great idea. Uh, it was adding depth to, to my personality because you can't really see a lot off a 15 second dance video. Like you said, like people listening to this podcast will go watch my TikToks and not even think I'm the same person just because it's so, it's so different. Right. Um, but I've been trying to get touch into the male demographic as well, because I'm so strong on the female demographic and want to step into the sports world. I grew up like an athlete. I played sports my entire life. So that's why that was such a good move to go on that Barstool podcast with Dave. Dave is huge in the guy demographic. He has a little bit of a, the college fan base, which is older as well. And it, it, ha it has a lot to do with sports, which I love. So it was just this perfect crossover because I feel like Barstool also sometimes has trouble reaching the Gen Z uh, which I reach very well. And also on the female demographic, they don't reach Gen Z very well. So I think it was just a perfect crossover where we both were touching into each other's demographics. Yeah. You uh, are a product of mentor, mm -hmm. brother. So it's, you can't have the amount of wisdom and insight you have without seeking out mentorship. And I was struck even with Bryce by, you know, we went to dinner with a couple other guys and how much he listened closely and, uh, and then also told me who else he has sort of working with him. Talk mm -hmm. in general, Josh, about the importance of finding mentors and coaches for everybody listening to this. Yeah, I mean, there's been, I can probably think of like five, six, seven very important mentors in my life since I moved out to LA. But just to know that you have the ability to send a text to someone that's been through what you're going through or to get advice, have a different set of eyes, a fresh pair of eyes, look something over. If that's, you know, a deck for an investment, if that's what your next play is going to be in, in a business situation or whatever it is, like, it's just a comfortable feeling. Like I'm able to shoot off these texts to billionaires or people that are very wealthy and have done what I'm trying to do. Um, and, and they give me advice or they'll hop on a 15 minute call with me and just go through what I'm, I, I need to vent out, you know? 
What you do though, that people don't get, first off, you should all be seeking a mentor. But when you, are, when you are one like me, let me tell you what you watch. Do they do what you ask them to do? And then they can right. come for more. Nothing's more frustrating than someone asking you for your time, asking you for some counsel, like today. Today's a mentor call for your social media, for you moving into the younger demo. And we're telling you things you should be doing. Get on more than one platform, post more consistently, document your life, tell a story, right? We're talking about those things you need to do. Build your identity and your brand. Are mm -hmm. you going to do these things? They actually work. So for you, some about entrepreneurship, you get approached with a bazillion deals. And he's right. had mentorships like the Van Winkles from Facebook, Ashton Kutcher, different people. How do you determine that this is a business I want to invest in because you put money in stuff or just partnering with somebody? How do you make that determination? Um, sometimes it depends on like the, the product, like how passionate I can get behind the product. But a lot of the times it has to do with the founders. Like, when I see a good founder or I believe in a founder very strongly and I know they are a good one, they're going to make it work. Great founders always find a way to flip their product, change it if it doesn't work. Like they find a way to succeed and ha make you have an exit, right? So it, a lot of the times it's, it's looking at those founders that are involved. Do you work on yourself at all or are you too young? Like if you started kind of reading um, are you just kind of mirroring what these mentors give you? Are you trying, how do you grow your own identity? How do you do that when the whole world's telling you you're amazing, you're 18, 30 million people, you can't walk out of the front door. He's back in this town in, outside of Toronto that he's in right now. I can't even imagine when you go outside there. How do you, and the reason the question is this is, is, let me tell you what I mean by asking. A lot of people listening to this have had some success. Mm -hmm. And I think they grew to get to that success level. And here's what I watch with humans. They get to a certain point that maybe exceeds where they thought they'd ever get. And they, they get comfortable. Themselves. You got it. So what yeah. are you thinking about that? Um, so for me, like, I'm, I'm analytically tracking. I'm a very analytical person. My dad's a calculus teacher. So I really? was just like, I remember being like three, four, four years old. And my dad had the timetable out, like the 12 by 12 going through it with me, making me memorize every single time. Stay like, so I've always just been a person that's driven by numbers. So what I do is I'm tracking my numbers all the time. If that's like in growth, if that's like how many likes I'm getting proposed, how many comments, um, the like how many people I'm converting a day from my TikTok to my Instagram. And when I'm tracking that stuff, I'm making sure it's never going down. Like that's what keeps me driven to just go up, up and up. The only thing I have to say about that is like, you just need to make sure you don't lose yourself in the content and trying to always beat the old content by going crazier and crazier because i think that that is a road we went down like sway when we started getting in a lot of trouble in the media there was a point when we were just always trying to outdo ourselves and that got us in trouble but we kept going and we kept pushing ourselves forward so in the end we did it we made it work but you just you just can't get comfortable if that's putting yourself even in uncomfortable situations like starting youtube or going on a brand new podcast or like just Add depth to your portfolio so then you're never comfortable. You guys were listening to an 18 year old. I mean, so just what you know, <laughs> so, you know, I coach large groups of entrepreneurs. I have something called the RT Syndicate where I coach entrepreneurs. One of the things I'm psycho about is tracking metrics and data. I cannot get over how many people that are either entrepreneurs or even in like fitness. So they say they want to get fit. They don't track their calorie intake. They don't track their water intake. They're not specific uh, about the weight and the reps, right? You know this. From yes, your... I know. I'm tracking my calories right now. I'm trying to get uh, – every day I'm trying to get like 3,500 3, calories right now. Yeah, and I'm trying to not eat 3,500 because I'm more than double your age, right? But <laughs> the same exact thing. You're trying to gain weight. But like how are you going to get super fit if you're not tracking it, if you're not measuring your body fat as exactly. an entrepreneur? I mean, so many entrepreneurs, they don't know their data. They've got no idea how many contacts are, how many leads, what's in the pipeline, what their revenues, what their, and like, it's brilliant to hear that on social, which is your main business, you're a psycho about the metrics and the data. It's awesome. Dude, I've been someone that's been so focused on like the customer since day one. Like how I blew up on social media was not a natural way kind of to blow up, I would say. I, I feel like I cheated the system and I don't think people are going to be happy to hear this, but what I pretty much did is I, I had musically right i knew this platform it was easy to grow on but it was going down in relevancy so i hired my sister on a 15 percent commission-based salary when i was 14 years old and and i was going live on the platform because i found out you can make money on the platform 
the other thing I found out was when I went to the leaderboards on the live stream app, they actually showed you a list of the top 250 highest donators. So the people that donated the most money in a live stream. So while I was live every single day, I would get my sister to go through all those 250 people, tap on their profile, follow them on my account. She'd be logged into my account. She'd follow them, like seven of their posts, and then unfollow them and swipe off. And she went through the entire list. So I was going directly to the consumer, the highest paying customer, because I was, I, I knew that I saw the list. So I didn't need to have the most followers on the app. I had, I think, 80,000 followers, but I was the highest paid live streamer on the app compared to people that had 7 million, 10 million followers because I was going right to the customer. And then also had my sister going to the biggest musically like uh, creators going to their comment section because those were the most engaged followers. Obviously, they liked the video and commented. And then she would go to all the positive comments, the people that loved on that person and follow them on and that like their posts, unfollow them. And then they would follow me as well. So then I was getting, we did two, we would do uh, until we did it until I would gain 250 followers every day. And then I would make sure that I was gaining, or I was making minimum $500 a day too. So we would go live and she would be going through and following that until I made 500 and then 250 followers every single day minimum. And then that grew up to 500, that grew up to a thousand, that it just kept going. Okay. All time on the show. One of my favorite things ever, ever freaking said, first off, it's incredibly <laughs> vulnerable and honest. Yeah. People are, people are going to be like, Josh is a fake social media thing now well, because I, I like, I think, I, I think we're a little past you having to worry about that. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ago. But, but everybody stay on this. Okay. A couple things to unpack there. Number one, a dude with 30 million was literally going back and liking seven a day and getting like, that's how you grow. How many of you are yep. doing that? So my, my social media team's watching us do this right now. They are going crazy. Cause when we started, I'm like, listen, after I make my post every day, I want you to go to Tony Robbins and Gary Vee and Tom Bilyeu and Grant Cardone. I want you liking this many of their posts. I want you commenting on these. They're like, that's not going to get us anything. I'm like, absolutely. Yes, it is. And so yep. we would micromanage it so much. And still with my team, I'm like, we need to reply to this many comments. We need to like this much other stuff. I'm a psycho about it. Now you listening to this, those of you listening, do you do that stuff with competitors, with peers, with people? Do you comment and like in different people's communities? Are you there consistently? This is how you grow something mm -hmm. when it's not just your content. Second thing I just want to say is how many of you, you can't get Josh because he's one of the most famous dudes in the world. But how many of you have a person that thinks like Josh in your life? So for me, when I started, it was my son, Max. He'd do the likes. He edited my podcast. He sort of helped me with content. You got to have someone in this age. It's probably your kids, guys, who's like, hey, <laughs> let's go over there, right? But like, you got to have someone. You were that person, both the creator and the person doing it, right? It was you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was luckily able to do both. But I, my sister was a huge help as well. Like, being able to, like, hire someone and just be like, all right, I, she knew as well she was making money every time she was going through the follow list, so she loved to do it too. Like, it, it helped me a ton. And then it, it's like, it didn't just stop there. I made sure, like like you said, on Instagram, I would comment on like Sean Mendez photos or Justin Bieber photo, and I would make try to get like a lot of likes on my comment. I would try to comment something relatable or funny on under their posts. And then I would gain followers from that as well, like on my Instagram. And the crazy thing is, is like a lot of people would, if they ever saw you doing that or caught you doing that, right, they would be like, you're a scammy social media kid, you're like, that's not how you can grow. No one can grow that way. They would call you out on it. They would try to expose you, whatever. I never got caught because I was good at it. And look at where it brought me. Like, now I'm all the way up and I'm at the top. Like, it took a lot of work and it was like actual work. It wasn't just like hoping a video would blow up. I was like entrepreneurially finding a way to get famous on social media because I knew I could do it. I just knew it would take work. Brother, awesome, freaking awesome. Like, and by the way, it does work and it may not blow you up to 30 million followers, but it might blow you up by 6,000. It might blow and you then, up by 6,000, right? Yeah, and then 6,000 turns into eight, right? Yeah. Because then you start, like the craziest part about it all is, is like once you start getting that traction, like once you start building that fan base, it just starts growing on its own too. So there's obviously a point where I stopped doing that all. Like after probably two, two years of doing it, like I didn't have to go and like all those posts anymore. Or I didn't have to go and follow and unfollow people. I didn't have to go into that donation part and like do that to make money. Like I, I could do it on my own now and I would get pushed on the app naturally because 
I was already one of the big creators. Like you just got to do it for a long enough time, work hard enough so that it starts growing on its own. Yeah. And the principle of it is brother is to do things other people aren't willing to do. So exactly. This, thing, this is why it's my, one of my favorite things all time said on the show. I've had tons of social media people. I have the biggest dude I've ever had on because here's actually what I did. And so mm -hmm. a lot of you post stuff, but do you work your social media? Are you entrepreneurial on your, are you creative? Go to similar pages and like some comments, engage with people. It's it, it, what if it was 11, some of you, what if it was 11 new followers a month? That's a big deal in a yep. lot of cases. So, so, so good, bro. So good. Let me ask you. And I'll let you, I'll let you in on one more thing. <laughs> People aren't going to like this. People aren't going to like this. But uh, so I first started and I did social media. Like I created my account and I did it for about two months during the summer. And then I got bullied in high school and I was used to being like the popular kid. I played sports. So I was like, what, what the fuck is going on right now? Why are people like making fun of me? Like calling me like like slurs all that and then i quit so i quit for like two three months my account went completely dead inactive and then my one friend was like yo josh why like why would you quit why would you stop doing social media like you were you were doing good why would you let like these stupid high school kids like get in your head right and i was like no what you have a great point like that's it's dumb so i went onto the app and i swear it was meant to be it was like the craziest thing ever but this was my first investment i would say of my life I saw this guy's account. He had 70,000 followers and he was quitting. He was quitting social media and his account was active. He was getting 10,000 likes a video and my account had 20,000 followers and was probably getting like 2000 likes. Right. And, and, and then it went inactive. So it was down to like a thousand. I DM the kid and I was like, Hey, can I buy your account? And then the guy was like, Oh, I don't know. Like people don't really do that in social media. I was like, dude, don't worry about it. Like, let me just buy it. I'll switch the username over whatever. He was like, all right, give me like $600. And this was me like being 400 or 14. Sorry. And I was like, Holy cow, $600. All right. This is like, it's a lot of money. So I sent him the 600 bucks, but that $600 turned into my 30 million follower account. That's on TikTok today. So that was probably the best investment I've ever made. Like, <laughs> like the multiple on that investment was crazy. Talk about rate of return on 600 bucks. Oh my yeah, God. I know. Get entrepreneurial about your social, right? Just do 100%. it. So good. All right. Last question, man. I, I enjoyed today, brother. Like, yeah, it's great combo, man. Definitely. I got to come on this podcast all the time. I would love <laughs> to have you on all the time and they would love to have you on here all the time because guys, listen, you're talking about a, a, a young man who's involved in like tons of different businesses and different sectors, different segments. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a musician. He's got a music with a hundred million downloads on one song. Like <laughs> so it starts with having his 14 year old sister start liking stuff. This is what yeah. I want everybody to get. You may not get to 30 million. What if you get to 30,000 or 300,000? Work your social media, work your brand. It's not just about the content, but I got to tell you when I, told family members you were coming on mm -hmm. and so this happened with bryce too brother i gotta tell you the amount of influence you have on young people is striking like the responsibility that comes with it so i'm talking yeah. about my nieces and nephews and bro i've had some of the most famous people in the world on i say i got josh coming on they're like what oh my you know like and it's mm -hmm. a demo that buys it's a demo yeah. also though that right now it's kind of a vulnerable demo, man. There's a lot 100%. of young people that feel alone. Their suicide rates are up. They're, yep. they're, there's pressure because there are such successful dudes like you to be successful very young. And if you're 23 and you're not, you're past your prime. You know, there's right. all of that stuff. So I just want to give you the floor. I want the parents to hear this. And if they have children, play this part at least of the show. What would you just say to kids like, Overall advice, I give you a microphone, which you have every day, but now it's not a 15 second video. Just young people, here's some of my counsel to you as a dude you all kind of look to. Well, the first thing is like something that you said there that like I feel very, very responsible for is like with power comes responsibility. That's something my dad said to me day in and day out every single day as a kid because he always felt that I was going to be something more than just a, a regular kid. So I have that tattooed on my arm. Like I live by that. And just the one thing I want to say to everyone out there is you got to stop comparing yourselves to the people on social media all the time, because that is the highlight of people's life. Like, that's what I think people are missing. Like you post on social media, like no one posts on social media now when they look bad, which kind of sucks. Like I remember Instagram used to be the most casual thing ever. Like I would post a picture of my smoothie that I just made. Right. Like it didn't need to be this like over edited, all that. 
everyone tries to compare themselves to these models on Instagram or guys might try to compare themselves to the sway boys on Instagram, whatever. You've got to stop doing that because obviously we don't post like the worst photo of ourselves. It's just, it's strange. I think it's, it, I get why people do it. They just got to get over that. The same thing why I love TikTok though, is because it's created this notion where you don't need the quality. You don't need the lighting. You don't need the, like the camera, which is awesome. So that's why, yeah, I just love being able to post on there too. Very good advice, brother. Comparison is a formula. I did a whole podcast on it for adults and young people. Comparison to people's highlights, comparison to the best one minute of their day, comparison to their best lighting, comparison to your former you. Even compared yeah. to a year ago, or you at a different moment in your life, it's a thief of bliss. It's a thief of joy. And um, I could not t agree with you more. And I do think it's more pronounced with younger people, but I think it's an epidemic with all people is comparison. And uh, bro, I am so impressed with you. And I, what I'm really glad is I hear a lot of people say, ah, these sway house guys or ah, social media people, these young people blowing up. And they just got a sense of this remarkable young man. He's, he's humble. He's got perspective. He's got a big you, for entrepreneurship. Check out his podcast, by the way. Follow him on social. And I got to tell you, brother, I'm really, really grateful that we met. I think you helped a lot of people today because I got one of the world's best social media people to give him actually the real scoop, which is not the surface BS stuff. You actually yeah. the truth. So, so thank you. No, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I went that in depth about like how I grew on social media and all like the little hacks and stuff. So hopefully people actually listen to that and take it seriously because I always felt like I would get in trouble if I ever kind of went off and said that, but now I don't care. So do follow those tips. Like they, they do work. You just got to like, you got to be a workhorse. You got to have work ethic. Nobody ever shows that side of it. And I really appreciate, you know, you doing that. And if it did, you know, ruin you, you, you've made millions of dollars. You're okay. But I'm pretty sure you're safe. So. <laughs> All right, brother. Yeah, hey, God bless you, man. And everybody, I hope you enjoyed today. Please share today's show. I know it was of tremendous value to you with everybody that you love and care about. God bless y'all. Max out. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.